require $70,000. Yes or no? No. Three years. Fifty-six thousand two sixty-four seventy-seven. Now I got a series of questions to ask. One: Will she be able to pay for her college education on her 18th birthday? Some. Some. The whole thing. Yes or no? No. It's going to cost seventy. She's only going to have fifty-six thousand two sixty-four seventy-seven in purchasing power, in inflation-adjusted purchasing power. Now let me ask you this. On her 18th birthday, when she looks at her account statement, what number is going to be at the bottom of that statement as total balance in the account? What's it going to say? It's going to say 74,000. It's going to say this right here. But now, since to me, everything, I think of everything in terms of a big uh, McDonald's hamburgers. So let's say this. Let's say that today, uh, McDonald's double cheeseburger costs a dollar, which it does. But it's going to go up each year with inflation. So next year it's going to be a dollar three, and the year after a dollar six in a little bit. So let's say that the McDonald's uh, double cheeseburger uh, goes up with the price of inflation. How much is she going to have in her account on her 18th birthday? Seventy-four thousand nine hundred forty-nine. How many McDonald's cheeseburgers is she going to be able to buy with seventy-four thousand nine hundred dollars? That many right there. So she'll have 74900 but it will only have the purchasing power of 56264 That's the number that we're getting when we take out the inflation. It takes out the inflation effect and tells us in constant purchasing power how much is she going to have. So we've got two different answers here. How much is in her account? 74000 What will it buy? It'll only buy the equivalent of $56,000 worth of stuff. Please. Right. That, that is that's uh, in today's purchasing power. So another way you can say that is she'll have the 74, but college is cost. More, cost right? more. That's right. That's exactly right. All right, let's think about this. Does anybody here, I'm probably the only person who remembers the first contract Steve Young signed with the USFL. I remember. I remember. Do you remember what that was? $40 million, $40 million contract. One of the biggest ever. $40 million contract. I think Donald Trump was on the other end of that transaction, actually. I think he owned the team. And it, I think it was a per, uh, personal services contract. $40 million contract. Was it? It was a million dollars a year for 40 years. Is that a $40 million contract? No. See, but you hear it's not. Present value, it's not. But you hear contracts like that all the time, like this one. Ah, oh, $10 million for 12 years. Oh, it's a $120 million contract. I mean, let's not feel bad about it. That's still a lot of money. But is it, they, the popular press throws out, oh, he signed a $120 million contract. Did he? The question here is, we have two options. A $120 million contract or a near $70 million contract. Before you go any further, you need to stop. Please. Uh, this is the net Michael Jordan. Tell us your Book of Mormon quote. <laughs> oh, uh, Melchizedek. Remember what it says about Melchizedek? In the Book of Mormon? It's only mentioned once, I think. Oh, but after that. Now I'm going to forget what the exact words were. But there were many before, and there were many after, but there were none greater. Every time I read that, I think, well, that's Michael Jordan. <laughs> this uh, LeBron James guy? Jimmer? There were many before, and there were many after, but there were none greater. Uh, that's Michael Jordan or Mel Kesnick, you know. <laughs> <laughs> $120 million contract. Tell me what the value of that $120 million contract is. And once you've got it, see if your neighbor's got it. Where's the Where's he looking at? Oh, he's just saying 10 times 12 years. Oh. So, uh, thinking, Ryan. I know. Turn. Turn. 
Make sure your neighbor's got it. How much is $120 million worth? Hold on a second. A mere, I got a mere $56.6 million. How can you bear up under just that amount? But that's the, that's the point of this. You'll read in the popular press, they sign these big contracts. But when you boil it down, it's not as big. What would be the better deal here? This is $10 million. Sorry? Yeah. 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 Times 12 years. 10 million a year times 12 years, 56.6. So, should I take the 120 million dollars or should I settle for 70? Yeah. If you ever offered the two, take the 70. But what does it sound like if you read about it in the paper? 120 million. But they don't factor in the present value of a dollar. Are you saying that? Basketball players are not sophisticated enough to figure this out themselves. True or false? I'm not saying anything. <laughs> well, that's exactly what it is. We're going we're gonna to cut X amount over 10 years, but it's all at the back end. If we try to value that, we're not cutting as much. So, Brother Stein? Yes. So, where did we come up with a 14% discount rate? I mean, because we could throw oh. It could be anything, actually. We make up almost any number. Where do you get that 14%? That's question B on this one. Where do we get that 14%? How do you pick that number? Because if you pick 4%, you get a different answer. So where the, And that's, that's what accountants do. Accountants say, well, let's assume 14%. <laughs> <laughs> What's the hard part? 14 percent. Yeah, where'd you get that 14 percent? We're going to find this when we do forecasting. Uh, the hardest part, we just take what's the sales forecast and we run with that. Well, that's the hardest part. So accountants, once they get the hard, once somebody else does the hard part, we can do all the calculations all day long. But where does that 14, that's kind of what finance does, is they figure out the hard part. Don't tell them I said that. Don't tell them I said they do the hard part. But they, they spend a lot of time figuring out where does that 14% come from. So, where does it come from? David. Uh, I, I was going to say we need to assume the, the next Michael Jordan, uh, you get that pay by the end of the year, though, right? Right. This, this assumes the type is blank or zero. If it's at the start of the year, you put a one in here and get a different answer. Yeah. Where does that 14 come from? <laughs> what my money is doing when I'm not paying it to you now. I'm yeah. a team owner, I'm out merchandising, doing whatever. I'm, I'm out investing in stadiums or investing in other things. No, no, but careful. That's from, my from, from, but careful. From whose perspective are we doing this analysis? This could care less about the owner. Whose analysis are we doing? Of course, the players. So the player, click to the next slide. The best thing to think of it is risk-adjusted opportunity cost. What else could I get with my money? What if I told them, hey, give me the money right now? If they gave me the 70 million right now, what would I do with it? I'd invest it somewhere. And what this analysis assumes <laughs> is that I got other investments of the same riskiness on which I could earn 14%. Same riskiness as what? Now, this is the key point. What's the risk here? I'm the basketball player. What risk do I am I thinking about as I analyze this project? No, 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 no. Yeah, that's a whole separate thing. Maybe this is a guaranteed contract. We don't know. That's not the risk I'm talking about. What's the risk? What's the financial risk? Putting your money somewhere. Yeah, where? Yeah, but so if I leave it in the team, where's the money? If I let the team pay me ten million a year for twelve years, I have left my money in the team. So which risk am I interested in here? That the team will go bankrupt. That's the risk. And that's the hard part of this analysis. How do I figure out the financial riskiness associated with the team? That's where I get the 14%. So Jim said it very nicely. You tell the accountants uh, the interest rate, they'll get some cash flows and give you a present value. That's, that's easy. But the very hard part here.